Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the high grade Gundam Delta Kai. So I'm not sure if you guys do this or not, but I definitely do it all the time. So you're buying some Gompla, you've got a little bit more space in your cart, and you're gonna buy something else to go with it, and then you just pick a box, literally just based off of its box art. That is exactly what I did with this right here, the high grade Gundam Delta Kai. I mean, how could you not? It is a mix between the Delta Plus from Gundam Unicorn with a Gundam vibe. How cool is that? But what I didn't look into is when this kit is from. This is from 2012, based on the 2010 high grade Delta Plus. So when I got this opened up, I got a little bit of a shock, especially when it comes to the amount of stickers in here. So this looks color inaccurate at first, but after going through the build, which at times did look like it was going to be on the basic side, this turned out to be not too bad at all, and it definitely looks really cool. Now let's take a look at it. But first... Have you ever wanted to travel to Japan for free? This video is sponsored once again by those snack masters over at Boxu, a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers original assortments of premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings. Boxu makes such a perfect and memorable gift for anyone in your life who appreciates Japanese snacks and culture, especially during a time where people aren't able to travel as easily as they would like. And actually, not only would you be gifting them Boxu, which is already awesome, but also you would technically be gifting them the chance to win free tickets to Japan. Because Boxu's having a giveaway. They will be picking 5 lucky winners to win a free set of tickets and anyone who is subscribed before December 31st is automatically entered. I'll include a link in my description so you can check out the terms and conditions and other methods of entry. And from now until the 30th of December, you can receive your next Boxu in a special Kiribako wooden box. Lovingly handcrafted in Koga City, Japan by Matsuda Kiribako. And the gold foil design is exclusive to Boxu. How cool is that? So do you want free tickets to Japan? Use my code MECHA10 and the link in the description to become eligible to win the giveaway by subscribing to Boxu. My code will get you 10% off your subscription. Do not miss out on this unique opportunity available for anyone who subscribes until December 31st. So jumping right into absolutely everything we get inside of the box, and with the Gundam Delta Kai, we get the big old shield, we get that big old rifle, a pair of old school beam sabers, two alternate right hands, one for holding onto the beam sabers, one for holding onto the rifle, a pair of stands for using with the fin funnels round back, and a bunch of segments for parts forming this into its flight form. So this does not transform without a whole bunch of modification, but we'll talk about that later. First up, let's take a look at the Gundam Delta Kai. So jumping right on into the full 360 degree spin, and I have to say, for something that is pretty much a decade old, this turned out better than I thought it would, especially after seeing that big old sheet of stickers. The color accuracy on this, of course, is not perfect, but out of box, it is still quite nice. The detailing for the most part looks great, the colors look great, and the only real telltale sign visually that this is a little bit on the older side is the fact that every single plastic on this is high gloss. So the white is high gloss, the yellow, the purple, even the inner frame, it's all a kind of high gloss, which means it is that old school Bandai kind of brittle plastic, so you need to be careful with that. There is some aspects, of course, that do feel a bit dated with the kit itself beyond the aesthetics, but we're looking at it right now, not feeling it. But yeah, either way, at first glance, this does look really, really nice. Let's get in a little bit closer. So there is one aspect that I've noticed about this kit that I've never actually seen on anything before as far as I know, and that is parts that no matter what I do, they just won't push together. They always have a bit of a gap in them. And honestly, the one that perplexes me the most is the one up here on the wings. So these attach on just like so. So that is a peg like so that attaches into a hole with a poly cap inside. Now what this seems to do to me quite a bit is once it is attached on like so, over time this will start to reject like the poly cap is squeezing off and then the wing will end up basically just falling off. One of the oddest things I've ever seen. So yeah again because of the age a lot of the detail is quite basic so a little bit what I can almost describe gelatinous not that sharp but still it again it does look quite good. The seam lines will definitely need some closing up, and these are present all over this particular kit. I guess it's just the restricted technology they had back then, that this is just made up of a whole load of segments that just don't fit together as well as they could. 
Due to the tech of yesteryear as well, the knobs are quite prevalent as well, so these are pockmarking the kit all over, so you're gonna have to take a lot of extra care while cleaning these up. And of course, with a kit that has a lot of seams and knobs, we're gonna get a lot of mold lines too, so this kit will require quite a bit of cleanup and quite a lot of extra effort to look really good, but still, it is a nice looking kit. It's got all the basics. It does look really nice. It's very dynamic. It's really cool. It is just marred a little bit from the technology of the time. Oh yeah, and you're gonna need some paint too. Because this is one giant sheet of stickers, so I need to use the ones for the head camera and the eyes, the lens and the rifle too. And instead of going through each of these one by one because there is so many, I'm just gonna throw up a front and a rear image of what this kit looks like out of the box like this, and what it should look like if it was fully colored up, just like the Gundam Delta Kai should look. So now jumping into the accessories, there's the overview we already saw already, so let's check everything out one by one. So the first weapon that we've gotten here is the Long Mega Buster. So I'm jumping over to the Gundam Wiki right here to get some info about this, and this is the specialized beam rifle with a power output comparable to a beam cannon. The beam of this weapon could destroy a mobile suit with a direct hit. It was originally developed from the Delta Plus from the Full Armor Hyakushiki Kai's Mega Buster. This looks really nice. Really reminds me of Sin and Ju's rifle quite a bit. We've got a scope on the side there with a foil sticker for the lens. We've got a flip out segment up top here. And although this is quite simple when it comes to the design and has a large seam down the top, this looks pretty cool. This attaches sandwich style hand. It can only be held in the right hand. Attaches on just like that. Ball joint wrists as usual. Popping in just like so, simple as, nice and secure. Next up in here, we've got the shield, and according to the wiki, this is a standard defensive feature of most mobile suits, a thick piece of metal designed to stop physical rounds and treat it with anti-beam coating. Gundam Delta Kai's shield also serves as the unit's forward section in Wave Rider mode. Beside the beam sabers and beam cannons, it can mount a variety of weapons. On this, then, we have the optional high mega cannon. So this can seriously damage a mobile suit with even a glancing hit, and in some cases, total destruction. Developed with data obtained from the Double Zeta Gundam, its output has been reduced to about 46% in order to lessen the burden on the generator. This is in the exact same colors as the mobile suit and the exact same level of quality. It does feel a little bit on the hollow side, but detail-wise it does look quite good, and color accuracy-wise it is missing some of the purple that you'll either have to use stickers for or some paint. Attaching this as usual is quite simple, it just pops into the back of the arm just like this, but I will mention it's a pretty rubbish connection, it doesn't really hold on very well at all, so even trying to pull off the pose that is on the front of the box is quite difficult. I find a lot of the time you have to jam it in there, then try and use this little segment to just kind of hold it in, just so it won't drop off on you. You might need to tighten that up. Also, I will mention out of the box, the shoulders aren't the greatest either, so it just isn't working out at all. That's just sliding down and down and down. So next up in here, we've got a fairly old school pair of beam sabers. That's the chubby old beams in light pink. So in order to attach this, it's exactly the same as the beam rifle. You just have to change out the hand for this beam saber holding hand. And I will mention this is a right hand only. There it is attached. And while I'm mentioning this is a right hand only, we've got two beam sabers in here, which makes that a little bit on the lazy side from Bandai. And when these are not in use, you can just pop out the beam like so, and they can be attached onto the underside of the shield like so, where they can be used as beam cannons. These can swing down like so to tuck them out of the way, which is cool and quite neat. So next up in here, we've got a pair of proto fin funnels. And according to the Gundam Wiki, as their name suggests, they are the prototype of the Oryx 93 new Gundam's fin funnels, repurposed for the Delta Kai's use. The Delta Kai mounts two proto fin funnels on its back. Using the NITRO system, they may be deployed efficiently even by non-new types, given the pilot all range attack ability. So these can be fixed onto any sort of display stand as long as it's got a 3mm peg. So you can pose them in the air just like so. But in this kit, we do get a pair of these tiny, tiny mini stands. So if you want, you can pose them on this. These fin funnels do not move at all. They just stay in this position. And these are quite cute little stands. To attach these onto the Delta Kai, it's pretty simple. Just pop them off those stands and they just attach up on these wing binders, which don't like to stay attached for me at all, there's number one, and around to number two, just like so. 
So now moving into the articulation, and as usual, we'll move from the head down, but I will mention one thing first. The vast majority of the build on this is fine. Definitely no problems whatsoever. Sure, the binders on the back might pop off every now and then, but there's one joint that really blows. So yeah, shoulders are terrible. It feels like this joint just is not long enough. It barely holds in there whatsoever. So the poly cap is quite deep inside. That peg is really, really, really short. And it just doesn't really work. It's so weak and it flops and it just doesn't feel nice. It's really bad. So the neck on this is not your usual polycap. It does have a giggity 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 goo, a slight one, but this is actually a plastic neck. So it does have a ball joint up top and a bit of a hinge down below, but you can't really get anything beyond the standard basics and definitely no looking up because of that little bit right there. So I've already mentioned that the shoulders aren't great, but as for what they can do, these can move forward and back ever so slightly and fully rotate right there. The shoulder armor can tilt up like so. Yellow fin segment can move up. Full rotation at the upper arm. Not a whole lot of an elbow bend. Ball joint wrist. So the waist joint in here is a ball joint. There goes one of the wings again. Those are incredibly loose. Well, they're not loose, just kind of squeeze themselves off. So what we get out of this is a little bit of a movement to the front and back, not necessarily an ab crunch per se, and that can spin side to side like so, and there goes the other wing. Next up we've got two mini skirtings that can move up and down like so. This side skirting armor here is a combination, so we've got this one here that can move up and down, and this big thruster segment which attaches in just like so. When this is locked in, it doesn't really move at all, but you can unlock it a bit so it can rotate, but it is a little bit on the loose side, so lock it in like so. So inside the waist here, it is just a ball joint, it doesn't shift at all, and the upper armor of the leg right here that does not rotate, so this is always a bit of a limited combination. So anyway, what we'll get out of those, there is the kick all the way up to the front, that knee armor gets in the way a bit, it can raise up a bit more without that. Out to the back, it is blocked by that non-moving butt flap, and out to the outside, that is it, so quite limited. Again, no upper leg rotation. There is the bend at the knee, so it is double jointed and quite nice. And as for that functional movement at the ankle, there it is all the way to the front, so it is blocked. Out to the back you get a little bit. There's the side to side pivot, so not a whole lot. And we do have a downwards tilt of the foot and some moving ankle armor. So yeah, the articulation on the high grade Gundam Delta Kai is not the greatest by any margin. We also do have some loose wings and some loose shoulders too, so definitely, once again, a lot of issues due to the age of the kit. So now moving on to the transformation to Wave Rider mode, and this is definitely a parts formation, and the most party parts formation I have ever seen. So, this strips down into multiple parts, you know, based on the alphabet. So if you take off an arm, that arm is A, you take off the other arm, that arm is B. You strip this down to enough parts that the alphabet here has to go all the way to M. Yes, that is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. That's how many parts. Once you have it all stripped apart, you put them all together. And while I was doing this, I did not enjoy it whatsoever. It just felt like you were rebuilding the kit again. There is no real subtlety or niceness or anything elegant about this transformation. Just pull it apart and put it back together looking like the Wave Rider. But what I will say is, you end up with one rock solid Wave Rider mode. This is a flight form that's not gonna go anywhere. Nothing moves at all, which does mean it is pretty much static. Sure, you can twist these a little bit, but besides that, it is just stuck in position just like this. And I guess, what else do you really need? So if you just love the transformed mode of the Gundam Delta Kai, then this is absolutely perfect. Actually, I also noticed that we do have the rifle left over from the Gundam Delta Plus, or should I say the just Delta Plus because it's not a Gundam, so that is there if you like that as well. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and as far as things goes, this is definitely a bronze tier Gunpla in every category, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's an outright write-off. I still think this is a really cool looking kit because the Gundam Delta Plus is quite beautiful. So just going through the list aesthetically, this is very old school, a lot of seams, a lot of mold lines and a lot of nubs you will have to clean up. It still has that old school kind of plastic too that's kind of shiny, a little bit brittle and not crazy awesome to look at. The molding is a little bit not as sharp as it would be in a modern kit either. 
but it is still a nice looking kit. It's very eye catching and the color scheme is quite nice. When it comes to the accessories in here, it's not so bad. A little bit odd that we've got two beam sabers, just one hand that can hold on to them. The weapons are simple as you'd expect from a kit that is about 10 years old. And it does have some issues holding up the shield, which is quite the letdown. When it comes then to the build and the articulation, there seems to be a lot of parts that you can't fully push together. So out of box, it will need some modification. The shoulders are very, very weak. The hips are ball joints. And on the whole, it's just not that satisfying to pose or to move into any sort of position. And finally, when it comes to the transformation, it is quite an involved parts formation, but the Wave Rider mode does win out in the end because it's rock solid and looks exactly like you'd want it to. So when it comes to it, out of box, bronze tier. But if you want to put in the time, put in the effort, paint this up, fix those seams and molds, you'll still have yourself quite a beautiful Gundam with a rock solid Wave Rider mode. But anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. If you want one of your own, I will throw a link down there in the description. Thank you so much to Boxu for sponsoring this video. And of course, I will see you next time. Thank you so, so much to each and every one of you guys for watching these videos. Without you, this channel would not be possible. And my special thanks to those helping out over on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. So that includes Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T. Van Fawn, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, and Orgy59061.